In this video and the next video, I'm going to talk about solutions to the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. And in particular, in this video and the next video, it will be looking at a spherical potential. So that means that we have a sphere which, uh, which outside the sphere, we could say either has uh, has potential that is infinity, or uh, equally, we could say that inside the sphere, we have a potential that is minus infinity. The idea, though, is that the particle is going to stay trapped inside the sphere. And so uh, if we have the radius of the sphere here, so this is the center right here, the radius will be A in every direction around the center. And so the wave function will have to go to zero at A. And so I have right here, this is the time independent Schrodinger equation in one dimension. And so we have to get this in terms of two dimensions. And so to do that, uh, we're going to change this part here so that uh, it now doesn't just have x, but it also has y and z. So I'm going to kind of go through the math a little bit uh, quick here. Uh, if you're interested in in sort of uh, what's going on, I guess, behind the scenes a little bit more, uh, then I would highly recommend my playlist on the differential equations special functions. But uh, I mean, I think even if you don't watch that, you'll still be able to follow along with this. But I think you would get an even better understanding if you watched that playlist. And so Essentially, what we're doing is we're changing that one dimensional thing, which had just this part here in sort of the salmon color, into a three dimensional. And this uh, gives us what's called the Laplace operator. So, this here is the Laplace operator in Cartesian coordinates. But if we change that into spherical coordinates, then we would end up with this as our Laplace operator. And so I have in red the radial part, I have in green uh, the angle, this theta angle, and then in blue I have the phi angle. Uh, I always forget which one is the azimuthal angle and which one is the uh, polar angle or whatever else it might be called, but um, well, I'll just put it this way. The, the theta angle is the angle sort of uh, going up and down the sphere, whereas the phi angle is kind of going uh, around the equator of the sphere. So that's how we can sort of uh, think about those two angles. So we take this um, Laplace operator and spherical coordinates, plug that into our Schrodinger equation so that we end up with this. And then what we're going to do is a separation of variables. So we're taking our wave function here and separating it into this R, which is the radial part, which I'll talk about uh, in the next video. And then this Y here, which is the angular part. Uh, and so after dividing through this equation by y, by this y and r, uh, and by minus 2m r squared over h squared to kind of get rid of that right here. Uh, what we end up with is this. And so we have our radial part of the equation and our angular part uh, divided into uh, two terms here. And so we could subtract this uh, whole angular part and put it over here on the zero. And so then this is equal to minus this, which means that they both uh, must be equal to some constant. Uh, and so what we will do is set that equal to this constant, which is this L times L plus one. And uh, that the choice of that constant will make a little bit more sense um, in a little bit. All right, so 
once again, we are going to be focusing here on this angular part of the equation, the radial part in red here, I will talk about in the next video. So we have this radial part here. Uh, we multiply through by y times sine squared theta. That'll get rid of this y in the denominator here and get rid of these signs in the denominator here. So we end up with this. Then we have our minus L times L plus 1 times sine squared theta times y. Uh, we do another separation of variables because uh, we, we want to get this phi angle part uh, separated out from the theta angle parts. And so we will set that equal to this. We plug in and divide through by the uh, theta and phi functions. And so we end up with this. And then just like before, we could subtract this part and put it on this side. And so then we would have this part equal to minus this part. So we can set those both equal to a constant, and we will use m squared for the theta angle and minus m squared for the phi angle. So the phi angle uh, differential equation here is uh, fairly easy to solve. Uh, it'll just make it equal to e to the power of i, which is the imaginary number, times m times phi. Uh, and so when phi is equal to a multiple of 2 pi, then e to the i m phi goes to 0. Uh, because remember, uh, I've said this in several other videos, if you have e to the i times something, that makes it a periodic function, because the Euler identity e to the i x is equal to cosine x plus i sine x. And so this makes it sort of like a periodic uh, sine type function. Uh, and so uh, when phi is some multiple of 2 pi, then e to the i m phi uh, goes to 0. And so it's periodic, meaning that the function has periodicity when m is an integer. And therefore, m equals 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2. And if you've ever taken a freshman level uh, general chemistry class, you can probably start seeing uh, where the choice of this m and the choice of the l up here are coming from. And so now we want to look at the theta angle. And so, uh, well, what we're going to get as a solution is a, which is just, uh, which is some constant, times this right here, this p l m, with cosine being the argument, being in the argument there, because we have reparameterized x to be equal to cosine theta. Well, this is the associated Legendre function, which, uh, like I said, I talked about in my differential equations special functions playlist in more detail but it's defined as this so this here is what generates each of the different the different uh, functions or polynomials uh, I think Legendre functions aren't necessarily polynomials because I think there are some radicals in it but uh, but we have this part here in black, which is sort of uh, an operator acting on this here in this sort of teal color. And what we have in the teal color is the Legendre function. And so the Legendre function plus this here in black is the associated Legendre function. Here on the Wikipedia page for the associated Legendre functions, are a bunch of these different Legendre functions for different values of m and l. Uh, and this has it uh, as a function of x, but like I said, we have reparameterized it. And I think they have that down here. Yeah, so these are the reparameterized versions of the associated Legendre functions. But I wanted to look at these right here. And so 
this, uh, these graphs here, so we can think about this graph uh, as being um, sort of what's on the surface of a sphere. Um, and so what we will get there, uh, so this is our spherical harmonics. When we combine our associated Legendre function to uh, what we got for the phi angle. But these are the surfaces of a sphere. And so the, uh, the associated Legendre function is telling us the theta angle, which is the uh, top to bottom uh, angle, where this right here, the darker purple, is telling us sort of the going around, uh, going around uh, the equator uh, of this surface. And so we can see here in this graph that uh, if we have if we have our our l being equal to zero, then this is just one the entire way around, and that would be essentially like having uh, if we just had like plus this whole sphere was plus, but if you start adding more uh, l to it, then you start getting uh, higher frequencies on here. And so we can see if we have in green here, uh, so we have this part here, which is negative. Then we have a little part here that's positive, then a little part here that's negative, and then a little part that is positive. And that is uh, exactly what we see here, where we have part of it positive, then it goes to negative, then positive, then negative, where these lines between them are where this function is hitting the zero point. Uh, so, oops, so we can see the zero point there, we can see a zero point in the middle, and then a zero point over there, which are would be the same as this zero point here, this zero point here in the middle, and then this zero point here. Uh, and then the phi angle is telling us, uh, sort of going around equatorially. And so we see here, uh, if we add an M, so if this is m is 0, this is m is 1, then we get this longitudinal line here. And then going around equatorially, we go from positive to negative. And one thing to think about, too, is that uh, these surfaces of the sphere, so it's, it's easy to mistakenly think uh, that there must be something on the sphere spatially that's sort of going uh, down and up and then down and then up. Uh, so like this part would be sort of sticking out and then this part would be sort of sticking in and then out and then in. And uh, that's not really what's going on. Um, so the, the dimension going up and down on here is not like a real spatial dimension, but it's more just the value of the wave function at that point. Uh, and so the value of the wave function up here is positive, then here is negative, then positive, then negative. Uh, and, you know, sort of the same thing with the phi angle. Uh, but anyway, that is sort of the intuition. Um, what we will find uh, in, the, in the next video is that when we add the radial part of the equation, then we start... Uh, getting things like this. So this is something you might uh, recognize from the um, from like a freshman level organic chemistry where we have the s orbital and then the p orbitals and then the d orbitals and these shapes uh, come out of the uh, spherical harmonic equations uh, along with the radial equation. Uh, and so that is what we will see in the next video. Uh, by the way, this part here in, in black, this big radical, that's just like a normalization factor. And uh, I think I showed how that's actually calculated in my uh, spherical harmonics video in the um, differential equations playlist. So if you are interested in that, you can go check that out there. But sort of the takeaway message here is that uh, this is the, uh, the angular equation. So it still doesn't contain the 
radial equation. It's just the angular equation, and it depends on these associated Legendre functions uh, and this e to the i m phi here for the phi angle, and that is the sort of physical interpretation of of the spherical harmonics. Uh, like I said, in the next video, I will talk about the radial equation and give a little bit more physical interpretation of that. And then after that, we will move on to the hydrogen atom. Uh, I hope you found this video useful, and I will see you in the next video.